Greetings, magical mages and spiritual sages. Welcome to the Age of the Mage podcast, and we're on episode 62. I'd like to uh, talk a little bit today about a couple serious subjects. They overlap, and these are the concepts of spiritual warfare and psychic attacks. Now, I have been very blessed in my life so as not to have uh, experienced very much of this, you know, heavier type of darker energies. And yet I know others who have really dwelt, you know, dwelled in some of these tougher zones and have experienced so many things uh, that fall under one of these categories, I would say. So I want to address these issues and give them some of the attention they deserve and talk a little bit about them. I think largely because we could start to see more of this type of energy enter into our dimension. More chaos, a little bit more darkness, and maybe because of the way we're shifting, some frequency shifts, dimensional shifts, things like that, we might be more aware of things than before. I've, I believe we're going to start seeing other dimensional um, beings, entities, and scenery more often because I think the boundaries between dimensions may very well be affected by the upcoming earth shifts and changes. And it's not all bad because this will also enable so many of us to take our intuition and our extrasensory perception up to the next level. And we're going to be seeing good things, too. We're going to be able to connect better with those wonderful higher beings that we are probably already in touch with. Uh, Many of us will start seeing parallel worlds and some of the mythological creatures and perhaps the fae or the elves that that just because we don't see them regularly, we can sometimes feel that they're not there when they really most likely are there. And so this difference that we'll be experiencing in frequency is going to enable I, uh, us all to have more access to seeing beyond the veils that have been traditionally set up around us. And this is really exciting. All right, but at the same time, it does bring challenges because it's the same way light can enter in and we can become aware uh, more and more and more sensitive to beings of light and frequencies of higher vibrational uh, resonance and things like that. We're, we also may become more aware of things that don't feel so good or even shadow beings, which uh, may not be negative at all. But we can't uh, define them. And so they can cause confusion or they could cause fear. Perhaps we will see, uh, sometimes have a crossover of dimensions where we will, we might see other humans, whether they are past humans or in another space or whatever the case may be. It would be scary to us to have this happen, even if it's not intended in any way to be dark or negative. Just the fact that it's happening is uh, can produce this confusion and fear. And that is not even including things that might really be intentional, uh, carry darkness intentionally towards us or come in as an attack or come in as a uh, deterrent, an invasion, you know, something around us that we are not, we don't like, we don't want, and is pulling us down in some way. So these things, I believe, are very real. Now, some people uh, may not choose to believe that things um, can reach us, darkness can reach us. And I want to address the idea that there are basically two ways in the 3D world that we approach warfare, competition, our own personal sovereignty, right? They are offensive and they are defensive. 
tactics. And these are very real. We're all familiar with these. They're, you know, they're used in almost every team sport. We know that if we are putting energy out and running at something, that we're in an offensive type of position. If we are standing back and focusing more on how are we going to protect ourselves, we're ducking down behind a desk or a wall or something. They were in a defensive position. So there are these two types of actions when it comes to interacting with other uh, energies that we vacillate between and we find a balance between. And some of us are better at offensive measures and some are better at defensive. These things come kind of naturally, might even be worked into some of our personalities. They might show up as, as we've been discussing the various types of personas and archetypes. Some are going to lean more towards defensive behaviors and others offensive rates. So these energies exist in the 3D world. So for me, it isn't that far of a stretch to uh, accept that these energies also exist multidimensionally and interdimensionally. So as above, so below. This statement holds true for me quite a lot, quite a bit. And for me, this means that there can be good things coming into our personal spheres that are etheric, that we cannot see necessarily, uh, or we can have wonderfully good, strong, loving, and light connections with things we cannot see. And yet, I also believe that dark things can reach us that we can't see. And so I believe there is always this kind of balance going on and that there really is the two forces of dark and light that interact with us in, in some way, whether that's etheric, whether it's astral, whether it's emotional, or whether it's physical. So for me, it is a natural extension of the lawfulness and the things I observe here in the 3D world to extend those same principles into my multidimensional life, into how I would uh, describe higher dimensions and so on. Now, I also understand that as we raise in frequency and as you come across cultures and species and different kinds of sentient beings that have evolved to certain degrees, that you will see less darkness in those spheres because they are living in more light. They are living closer to the source of truth and love. And so you're going to see there's no doubt that there are dimensions far more filled with light than with darkness. But by the same token, I'm not, I don't doubt that there are other spaces, other fields, other planes where they're heavily populated by dark beings who have not yet evolved and as we as we find out with energy it it coalesces and gains in strength uh, according to what we have at the core so you have the darker spheres and planes probably attracting more and more darkness just because it builds up around those beings and so i believe there are the two types of planes and then all kinds of things in between And I think that we do interact with these various invisible planes and realms. And so for for me, it is plausible and possible and even sometimes probable that we are receiving some sort of attack, some sort of invasion of our privacy from darker forces or lower vibratory beings or things like that. So with that out of the way and assuming that premise holds, then I'd like to progress with talking more about this. Now, we have the idea, the concept of spiritual warfare. Warfare does involve, uh, it brings to mind an entire scene, doesn't it? It, We see battles, we see skirmishes, we see uh, duration of time when we think of the word war or warfare. It's not a one-time, okay, I I got hit, I get back up, it's over. You know, it's not that one one hit type of event. War brings the connotation of a longer duration and an ongoing struggle. It also maybe uh, lends itself to the idea that 
we have different sides with different agendas and that they really are fighting strongly for the agenda that they are aligned with. And so you have this, maybe in war, you have this connotation of two sides battling it out or two different styles or two different forces, two belief systems that have an ongoing challenge with each other that just keeps showing up um, through war-like tactics and strategies. Whereas when we think of a psychic attack, it's a little different. We might have a one-time thing. Uh, someone could even psychically attack you accidentally. We are getting versions of psychic attacks when we are just around somebody who gets angry at us, you know, and that anger comes off of them and easily can transfer over to us right through any kind of sphere. It can be physical. You could be in the physical range of the person, or it could be over the phone. It could be online. It could be from car. You're out driving and you have your road rage events. It could, it, you know, these kinds of things could spark uh, and send negative energy to us. And yet the person may have no knowledge whatsoever of any kind of ability, you know, at least consciously. That person may not even know that they can send such a you know, focused um, dagger of energy at you, but they, but it happens. And then you just move up from there. We have uh, the unintentional, of course, and then we, we reach places where you do start meeting people who are aware they can send uh, blocks your way. They could send hindrances. They could send curses, hexes, interferences. They can, um, you know, learn techniques that are even more complex uh, that could enter your field and do something to you. Now, these attacks, I would refer to them more as one-time deals, unless, of course, it's a, a person kind of harboring uh, some sort of resentment against another person, and they just keep keep bombarding that person. At, it, at some point, it might turn into actual warfare if the other person becomes aware enough of what's happening and can return some shots over the bow there you know then you get a two-way battle but if it's just a one-way thing it's usually more like an attack a bombardment uh you know this kind of one offensive hitter of course i uh, that it exists that exists and so we might not want to dwell on these things and i do understand that because we have a lot of things going on in our world that we need to know are true and real, and yet they're not very fun to look at, are they? They could be dark. They can be depressing. They can be discouraging. And yet we do need this balance of staying informed and staying aware of truth and aware of the, the actual state of events as opposed to living in a dream world just pretending it doesn't exist. And so we don't want the the negativity that does exist to pull us down as individuals. We don't want to lower and sink or, or lower our own vibrations or damage our protective field by too much exposure to things that could uh, do that. Right. But at the same time, I, I believe we really need to be informed and I believe we need to know things so that we can refine our skills of discernment and we can recognize truth and we can know what are the real battles that need to be fought without knowing what's really happening. We're not aware of where our energies are needed. We're not aware of where we can use our magic to and be the most productive. So there is this fine balance that we develop when we are working with light and dark energies. And so by no means am I encouraging us to start becoming paranoid or start focusing constantly on dark energies or, or fearing, oh my goodness, they're all around me all the time. No, no, not at all. It's more along the same lines as I would advise all of us to be aware and be informed and be educated as to what can exist and what can happen and what does exist just so we can actually be better prepared and find ourselves in a stronger position of either offensive or defensive behaviors should the need arise. You know, we cannot prepare when it's past the time for preparation. Preparation happens before you need what you're preparing for. And it's a natural law. There's no way around this. Not none. 
You cannot escape this. If you don't have water stored up and they turn off your water, then you don't have water. It's just the way it is. Now, you may be able to go to the store and get water, but at the moment in your home, if it's not stored, it's not there. And it's not that, it, it, it's not that this is a punishment. Um, not, you know, if you find yourself in an area unprepared, you're not being punished. It simply didn't, it didn't occur to you or it didn't happen or, or circumstances did not allow you to prepare. And then if the need arises to have that, that certain type of preparation, you know, you're caught off guard, you're caught without it. Well, in the case of our spiritual and mental, phys- um, you know, magical work, we can be as prepared. It, it, we're not limited. We're not limited by money like we might be if we were trying to get fully our house fully stocked with food or something. So we're not we don't have some of those limitations, but we but we could be limited by the fact that we may not recognize how important preparation is and that if we do not hone these skills, our intuition, our discernment, our sensitivity, our telepathy, our um, healing Uh, anything that falls into these categories, if we do not pay attention to them and gradually work on them and accept them into our lives, value them and fine tune them, when the time comes to use that skill, it won't be there. That's just how it is. That is not to say you couldn't begin to learn. Maybe a time occurs that you wish you had done such and such. And as soon as that uh, crisis passes, you suddenly begin to work on that because that has activated that in you that has let that instance or that incident has let you know that oh this is important and it might come up again and I don't want to be caught uh, you know unprepared the second time around and so sometimes we all go through life like this where one thing will catch us off guard and that draws our attention to it and there we go we start working on that area all right so we cannot always match or be ready for a psychic attack Uh, let alone spiritual warfare, without doing the preparation for it. And as I see it with psychic attacks, generally, again, we fall into these two categories of offense versus defense. And for me, the shielding techniques, the filtering techniques, those all fall under a defense tactic. And the offense would be, how do I uh, go forward? If I need to put energy out, how do I do that? And what's appropriate? And ha- how does that happen? So you might say it's the difference between the warrior moving forward and the guardian or the protector shielding in place. You know, there's these two different energies that can occur in, and knowing how those work for you, because they're all so individual, knowing what to call on and how this works for you ahead of time, that's when you want to do it. This is when you want to be working on these skills before the main event, before the test comes that there's just no catching up left. There's no time for that. So we want to address this in some very serious ways because I feel if you're listening to this podcast, you are part of the gathering. You are part of the group that I refer to as the chosen. You are here for a very important reason. You are incarnated on our earth at a time when we are very likely going to be facing a, a, an expansion, unfortunately, in, in some chaos. We're going to be seeing darkness because we're seeing so much light. And the two tend to come together. And as a part of the gathering, and as a very select, small subset of, of this great gathering, I believe you are chosen to become a hub of information, to become a place where others can go for information as well as for actual help, actual magical and spiritual help. And so if we don't become informed about the reality of darkness and its effects, then we're, we're only half informed. We, we, only, we only tell stories of love and light, but we aren't ready and we're not prepared either as individuals or as a collective group for the other things we're going to need to know. So for some of you, with that warrior spirit, protector spirits, um, unravelers, you know, we look at these various, the vampire soul line, 
um, the commanders, some of you are going to have a little more natural draw to working on these war-like strategies, offense, defense, how does it work? What can strategies be that we can move forward with in the etheric realms to help offset invasions of darkness and lower vibrations? What can we do? And some of you will be very aligned with this type of work. And others, others will definitely prefer the healing type of energies, the weaving, the building. So I, I completely understand that we have these different affinities for different types of energy. And that is lawful as it should be. But we all need some bottom lines. We all need a foundation established that includes a little bit of everything so that in an emergency, in a tight spot, you have something. You actually have some skills to fall back on. You actually have some depth of understanding regarding these things so that you can even know where to call out for help, even know when it's time to reach for help. You do not, we do not all have to become experts in everything. I am by no means an expert in some of these things, but my discernment through practice has reached a level that I might be a little slow, but I'm getting better where I could say, okay, there is something going on here now besides just a down day or besides just a series of unfortunate events. We're looking at something deeper than that. Aha, there is, a, there is some version of an attack happening. And what's interesting, rather than becoming paranoid and dwelling on this, it gives you power back. It gives you strength. It gives you the knowledge like, okay, all right, what do I want to do? What do I want to do about this? And sometimes it's wise to just call on somebody that you know that's super good at this stuff. Say, hey, I'm getting attacked. What, what do you see? What do you make of it? What can Tell me what to do. I'm on it, and I'd like your help. Sometimes that's the answer right there. But if you couldn't discern the attack in the first place, you wouldn't call out for the help. And that attack could grow and spread and affect your vibrations for far longer than it ever needs to, right? So we have these individual type attacks. It's very good to form a foundation and some basic knowledge on what to do. And then just briefly, let's revisit the idea of this spiritual warfare. All right, I think that's going on. I believe our world is caught in the middle of an enormous multidimensional war. And some of us, are going to be called right up to the battlefield, right up to the front lines. Again, I believe many of you uh, will come from this group. You will come from this network. I believe this is part of your calling. And so we need special skills, special groups, special training. And I would love to offer any help I can in these ways to you because I really honor the fact that you're willing to do this, that you're willing to be here and you're willing to be in the front lines during this spiritual war. So I want to continue in the next podcast. Let's consider this part one, an introduction about what that it exists in the first place, that war, that multidimensional war exists, that interdimensional uh, war exists, that psychic attacks really do occur. I wanted to set that fa- that premise up first. And now what I'd like to do in the next podcast is move into some discussion about what that means. What does that really mean? We toss these words around all the time. But, you know, we're all living pretty comfortably and and we forget what it's really like to get bloodied up in a messy, dirty war. We forget because we're very blessed in general. Many of us are very, very blessed. And when all of a sudden the hits start coming, it just throws us off. We're like, well, I didn't quite expect this. Right. But unfortunately, unfortunately, we are in the middle of a war and it will be a bumpy ride. And we have the courage. We have the strength to do it. We have each other. We have magical powers. We have spiritual gifts and connections. We are here to do this. So we're not lacking the tools. We've got them. But I would love us to talk about them and what are these tools and what what can we each do at the very least to give ourselves a foundation. And for those of you who want to go on and, and really you feel that in your in your 
bones. You're like, I'm here. I'm here as a warrior. You know. Then we're going to go into much more de- detail in future podcasts and other webinars. Things that we'll do just specifically for various uh, archetypes. We'll, we'll continue on for that. But I do want to lay this kind of basic foundation for all of us. I want all of us to feel safe and secure and know what to do ahead of time. Know what to do before the hits come, before the attack comes. And that'll give us a lot of power. That will give us a lot of courage and strength to kind of ride these storms that might uh, be approaching. So I will sign off for now and I'll join you next time with some more ideas about this these things that we can put to some very good use and i thank you once again for being here and i will return shortly and say goodbye for now